Hello, my stampy scrappy friends. I am jumping in here today with just a little tutorial using the tags under the tree stamps and thin cut set. Um, if you were in my glitter, all that glitters class yesterday, you know that this was part of the um, bonus project. And I sent it out with pieces so that everyone who got it would be able to paper piece this. But I wanted to share some other ideas that are also going to be a lot of fun using this set. So let's get started here. The first thing we're going to do is play a little bit with some Distress Oxides. And these are, if you haven't been aware of them. They're a Tim Holtz or um, Ranger product that is kind of, it's an ink pad. Oh my gosh, I put them all away. It's an ink pad that is kind of a cross between a dye ink and a pigment ink. That's two of the colors I want, and there's one, two. I am so sorry, I thought I was very ready for this, and obviously I was kidding myself. And there's the fifth color. Okay, hopefully that's the only glitch in today's tutorial. So what we're going to do is use these um, Distress Oxides and do some blending for a background color that we will um, use to do a die cut and then stamp with this set. So let's first do one for the Christmas tree. And what you use when you're um, using the Distress Oxides are these blending tools with the handles on them and a pad. And I keep my pads in these little jars so that I don't have to um, let me screw together they're really pretty cool this way I don't have to try to clean them and do all of that afterwards and I think to clean these would be pretty difficult so that's the one with peacock feathers and I'm using mowed lawn for the other color and what we're going to do here is start with mowed lawn Remove the lid there, and we're just going to ink up this blending pad and put it down on our paper. You can see that adds a lot of color very quickly, very easily. And the more you add, the darker it gets. And also, these um, are very very opaque and so if you need to go over something with them you can do that and just keep layering and layering and layering until you have the exact combination or blend blendingation of colors that you desire so we're going to stop there with the mode lawn and I'm going to come in from the other side with peacock feathers is the color. Also, the other thing I like to do with these when I'm using them, like I said, it's kind of like a pigment ink, so it does stay moist. And I'm going to bring in a paper towel just for my fingers to hold this down on the side that I've already done the uh, hard to call it blending but that I've started <laughs> to do the blending with. And here's the peacock feathers and we've reached the blending line of the mode lawn. You can see how well those are blending together. But now since I'm going to cut trees out of this I think I want more green on the paper and less blue. The tops of the trees will be kind of bluish, but I think I want more of the green involved in this project. So we're going to turn this around so that I can reach it again. You always want to do this in a circular motion 
And we're going to just start adding some more green up into the blue. And see how well that's already covering over the blue? Isn't that amazing? And I'm using a little less pressure now because we're just going to kind of let it blend out. And come back with just a touch more blue to make the blending more perfect at the top. I'm going to just put this aside for a moment. Isn't that gorgeous? It's almost like Seahawk colors. Do I have any other Seahawk fans here? Okay. Probably not. I'm in the wrong part of the country for Seahawk fans. So let's put those two colors aside and we're going to do another piece like this with a three color combination. There's my papers. And this combination we're going to go from the uh, Mermaid Lagoon to Seedless Preserves and then picked cherries. So let me remove these blending pads and put them in their own little jars. I put them in upside down because then I just have to put that down. It's got like a Velcro grabbing surface. I just put it in there and grab it and ready to go. The only time I really get it on my fingers is removing the pad. And it does get on my fingers. Okay, so let's start with the Seedless Preserves. That's the color that's going to be in the center. So I'm going to ink up that Seedless Preserves. Probably don't need to hold on to that with the towel just yet. And put it down in the center. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to blend the other two colors into this color. So I thought, you know, it may be just easiest to have this color down first and give it its own area on the cardstock. And let's go to the pick raspberry I'm going to use that on the right hand side and just blend that right in to the seedless preserves and again, when I get to the part that I want to blend, I'm putting a little less pressure on the brush or the blending tool just to let it blend in. Now I've got a little bit more of the preserves showing over there, so I'm going to put a little extra ink on there. You can see that's adding a little bit more opaqueness to it. And there we go for the picked raspberry. Now I'm going to end up taking this off because I only have two of these little handles. I do need to get some more. I'm pick up the Mermaid Lagoon pad. I'm going to turn this around and use my towel to hold it down. And we're going to start right in with this gorgeous, gorgeous blue color. Isn't that pretty? Oh my. I'm going to take it up into the seedless preserves. Once I get the coverage that I want, pick up a lot there. Once I get that coverage, we're going to just lighten up the handle a little bit, lighten up the pressure on it. 
and let it start doing its blending. With that Peacock Reserve color. Okay. And I'm going to just come back a little bit more with the Peacock Reserves. And blend it back into the other colors. There we go. Put that a little bit more into our blue. I really enjoy this technique because it's just fun to watch your colors start blending together and uh, turn into other colors in the meantime. You could do a whole rainbow like this. There's all kinds of other things that you can do with these. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Put a little bit more towards the picked raspberry there. Okay. So that is the second piece that we're going to be working with. Let me get these out of my way so I don't put ink on every little thing around me. What did I say this one was? Oh, see those preserves. I actually have two pads in there because I wasn't paying attention and started a new one. Okay, there we go. Now, let's see some things that we can do with these now that we have them colored. Um, let's go back to the tree one. I'm going to put this paper towel down just so that the back, all the ink that I got on the table doesn't distract us from what we're doing here. And I want a little bit of water. Okay, I've got some water in a little in a bowl here. I also have water in my sprayer. And this is just a general water sprayer, spritzer. And I'm going to just do some spritzing on this first piece that we did. I probably did that a little heavier than I actually wanted to. So then I'm going to tap it off a little bit. And you can see that that water picked up some of the color and gave it a really cool look there. And now I'm just going to use some water from this dish beside me and do some a little bit bigger splatters but that are not so close together like the spritzer did. Now if you can see this in the camera okay, you can see the color starting to lift and then we can just like tap it off with a towel and there we have just a really cool look now we're going to stamp and cut the trees out of this piece and my intention although it may not look that way to anyone else is that this kind of looks like a big those big fluffy snowflakes that come down out of the sky so that's my intent for that one and then this one, I'm not going to do anything to it right now, but we will stamp and cut the piece out, and I'll show you a different technique using the water with this piece. So here we are with the um, gift stack cut and stamped out of the... Uh, pink, purple, blue piece, and what we will do here is I'm going to take a small little paintbrush and get it wet, but not too wet. I'm going to go ahead and leave some of the water behind on the edge, and we are going to just paint this ribbon with water. 
And again, what that is doing for me is lifting the color off of that part. And so it's one way to make a distinction once we've stamped between the uh, presence and the ribbon. Because the ribbon is obviously now going to be a lighter color than the rest of the presents. And let's bring that down. And you don't have to take this off right immediately as you've stamped. But you don't want to, you know, leave it like overnight before you go back to it either. I mean, it will still lift. But you do, it will lift better when the ink has not settled quite so firmly. So here we are taking a little bit of color out of the bow. Lightening it up. And there's parts of the bow that are the inside, and so I'm leaving the color there. Right here is an example. And that's going to give better definition to the bow than if we just lifted the color off the whole thing. There we go. Okay, so do you like that? Is that very cool or what? It's just, in my opinion, just a really fun way to color something and then, I don't know, should I call it uncolor it a little bit? What I did with the rest of this is I went ahead, I don't know how well this will show up because it tends to not like to show up on camera, but I went ahead and used my... Uh, glitter, not glitter, shimmer pen, and added some shimmer to the bow so that it stands out even more. It's real pretty if you can't see it on the camera screen. It's really pretty. And I love these shimmer print pens. This one is clear, so all it does is add some clear shimmer to whatever you use it on. We have so many beautiful shimmer pens and they come in like just dozens of colors right now. So if you like this, go check those out because you can find it in about any color you want. I'm kind of old school with them. I still like the clear the best. Okay, so there's that. The other thing you can see that I did on here, I'm not going to do on the sample we're working on right now, is I added some of our star glitter to the polka dots on the package and gave them a little extra boost. Now let's see how this looks on the back. Looks kind of, eh, not so good because we got a little bit of soaking through there. And that means that we probably are not going to want to do something like this where we stamp on the back. So I'm going to give you an alternative uh, idea for that. Here's the Christmas tree. The uh, Mermaid Lagoon and cut grass inks that we used. And on this one I used some of our white gel pens. These come in a set of three and they're three different sizes. So there's a 10, an 08, and an 05. Using the 10, I colored in the star at the top of the tree. And using the 08, I like the 05 because it's very delicate, but the 08 showed up better. I just did some little, like, asterisk type snowflakes falling in front of this tree. So I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera, but there is the lighter spots where we tossed some water on it. And this is a good example of how different it looks when you left, leave it to sit 
overnight because I did water on this one this morning. I did water on this one right away. This one was colored yesterday. You saw me color this one, so you know that was just a few minutes ago. And there we go, adding some snowflakes to it. And just a reminder, snowflakes fall very randomly, so I'm not putting them all equal spaced on here. Some are very close together and some are very far apart. And we can do a few that are just like little dots as well. So that's another way to decorate and use the tag set. This one also is kind of icky on the back. So we will do something about that in a little bit. The next thing I'm going to show you is what we did or what I sent out for my classmates, class, class attendees, and that's the paper piecing one. And I have some hints on this. If you do paper piecing, you probably don't need a lot of help on how to do this, but I do have some ideas that I wanna share with you that I think give you superior results. And first I need to find where all my extra pieces went. I know I put them someplace safe and that always tends to be a problem. So here's an extra tree. And here is an extra stack of presents. Okay, so let's start with the presents. Maybe I already did start with the presents. Yep. Okay, we're gonna just cut out, I stamped the uh, pieces that make up the presents on different shades of red. I hope that shows up here pretty well. And so what I'm going to do first is cut out the one for the top. And I do not need to cut around the ribbon because I put another, I stamped the ribbon also on in yellow and then trimmed it out and put it on top. So that would cover the top part there. So I'm going to cut just right across there. And then cutting on the outside, I didn't cut quite to the edges. There we go. So starting on the outside of the line, I'm going to cut just straight down. I'm going to ignore where that second present comes up and just cut right through it. And do that on both sides. I want to keep the line intact with my project. So there is the first piece. And you may be asking, well, Betsy, why didn't you trim off that bottom piece? Let me attach this, and I'll explain why. So we're just using regular old adhesive on there. I'm going to place it on so it all lines up. Line goes straight across there. Our ribbon line goes all the way down. And I'm sorry, I did not make another ribbon line for this, so we'll have to just imagine that part. This is going down into that piece, so let's cut this piece next. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut on the outside of the stamped line and cut right down into the striped piece of the next present. And in this case, I'm going to just turn it around and cut straight up from that stamped piece. There we go. And then straight across the top. Okay, now when we put this down on top of that first present, we have no problem matching up that line because that first present goes down below the line. Now if I had cut that first one across that line and then I cut the second one across the line, I would have some little wobbly lines there that aren't going to match up perfectly. So by carrying that down beyond the uh, place that we're going to see it, like we have down here, you don't have to worry about if that line is straight in a perfect matchup. And that is why we've left some on. So here we go. We're going to put this down. And 
and oops, I told you to match everything up and look at me, that ribbon did not match up. So here we go, matching that ribbon up, making sure everything is covered on the sides. And the last piece, this one, there's nothing else to match up to it. The center box, the center present goes down below it. So this is going to be just totally cut out right on next to the lines. All four sides. I wish I was a better scissorer because I feel like I'm doing this so slow. I don't want to be boring anybody by doing this so slow. Okay, and we're going to add our adhesive on the back and place this right on the line with the previous. There we go. So that's how to paper piece without any gaps in between the pieces. I hope that is, I hope I've explained that well enough that you all understand. Now I'm going to just show you what else I've done on this one. I have some polka dots where the black, the red, I stamped it in red, polka dots are there. And I used some white liquid pearl and just dabbed a little bit on each of those to add some interest there. And then I took a red marker, red on red, and colored every other stripe in the striped paper. And on the bow, like I did with the water, I um, just did some uh, darker color in the inside of those loops on the bow. And that is... The present one. Now this one, no problems on the back. Everything looks pretty. So we went ahead and stamped on the back. Do not open till Christmas to and from. And those stamps are also included in that set. Now the tree, we did pretty much the exact same thing. I'm going to take this piece that's on the bottom. I'm going to add just a little bit of Oh, let's add some light red to the very bottom of this tree that's below that last scalloped edge. And I just chose red just randomly. Any color that's going to make this darker is going to be fine because when it's all put together, this is not a color that you will focus on at all. And it just needs to be a darker color, preferably green or a brownish green, than the color that it's covering. So there we go. Okay, on this we're going to start and build our way up. So we're going to trim just to the outside of that line. And do that on both sides. And we're going to leave the scallop from the next piece that's coming down on top of it and we're going to trim this lower piece and that could also be paper pieced right there with a different color or whatever but I just thought it's such a tiny little piece paper piecing it would be almost more trouble than it was worth trying to get everything lined up and in place so I decided not to do it. Alrighty, so this is going to go on top. Sorry, I am messing. Go on top of the white at the bottom of the stamped tree like that. So let's go ahead and just put a little bit of adhesive on there. Yes, I have adhesive on my paper as well. That's what I get for not using my art mat. And then the next color, I've already trimmed this out. You can see I have left the scallops that were above this one. So this is going to go 
right, we're going to line those scallops up with the stamped scallops right below. Like so. And again, try to keep within the lines <laughs> of the original stamped image. And that's what makes everything work. Next piece, a little bit different green again. And again, the stamped lines are above it. Can you see how difficult that would be to cut these scallops out and then have the bottom one try to match it perfectly? That would be, in my opinion, next to impossible. So leaving that extra bit of cardstock where this is going to overlap is just the perfect solution. And the last little bit is the top of the tree. There we go. And just like I did or didn't do with the uh, package and the ribbon, I also did not do a star for this one. But I wanted you to see how easy that goes together and how beautiful it looks without trying to do any really detailed fancy cutting on those scalloped edges. This also has a nice clean back to it. So again, we can stamp our Merry Christmas to and from on the back of that. On this one, I got really creative with some of our, well, creative, I don't know. I just think they're really fun. Some of our little snowflake sequins that we have for our shaker cards. So I just added some of those snowflakes to the tree with um, liquid glass. And while I had the liquid glass out, I also went ahead and fully filled in the yellow star with the liquid glass. So if you could see this in person, you would see that that star is nice and shiny and really three-dimensional looking. So that's our paper piece tags. Of course, we can always go and just color our tags with markers. And here's one colored with our tri-blend markers. And I used um, two different colors of tri-blend markers, excuse me, to create the four different, or five, actually five different um, colors on the tree. Again, this has got a really colorful back to it that would not look nice with these words stamped onto it. So what I did was I cut out another die cut of the tree, did not stamp it with the tree stamp, but just stamped it with the to and from, and then I put these together with a little piece of uh, string or ribbon, whatever you have that works best. So that can go under the onto a package just like so. And if you're worried about anybody seeing that, I doubt that they will notice it. But if it's a big issue to you, what you could do is glue these two together and do your stamping on the back of the second piece. So here's another look at the same tree with a little different colors. And I wanted to try this. I hadn't done it yet, but I thought it would be fun. This is the tin. To add like a little layer of... Uh, snow at the bottom of each scallop. So there's our white ink. I love this ink. It's very, very opaque. It goes on real nicely, especially the fatter the pen. This is the fattest one I'm using right here. The nicer it goes on. I like the very thin one for these little snowflakes, but using it on the uh, Distress Oxide, those thin little lines were getting a little blurred with the ink on there. So here we go, just adding like little snow branches, I guess. Snow, not branches, what would you call that? A snow garland <laughs> at the bottom. I also played around a little bit with the idea of doing popcorn, like a popcorn garland with the uh, white marker. 
Let's just give a little peek on this one. A popcorn garland could be simply three or four little dots that make up the popcorn kernels. And we're just going to send this garland right around the side of the tree. So three or four dots, I'll get a couple of them in there with four. And it's going to keep going on to the next layer. You have a strong popcorn for your trees. I love doing that. And you know what? I just thought of this. We always added some cranberries in there too. So it would be fun to take a little bit of the um, red carnation. Uh, liquid pearls and add little cranberries in between the popcorn bits. Do you think I should do that? I think I should. Okay, so there we go. This is a popcorn garland tree. And let me show you our presents that are colored by hand. This one is very, very bright. And this, although I did... Um, Let's look at the back. See, can't do that. I did stamp it with do not open till Christmas and to and from. But this also lets you see that you could use this for a tag on any present that you want to give for a birthday or a graduation, um, any gift giving occasion, or just as a because I love you and I want to give you something present. So they do not have to say do not open till Christmas. That's the stamp all by itself. To is by itself, and from is by itself. And there we go. And I think that's about all I wanted to show you today, but I am going to grab my red pearls and add some berries to that. So hold on if you want to see that result. Okay, so oh, some of my cranberries are obviously bigger than others, but you know, not everyone's going to know that they're cranberries, so that's okay too. They may just think that this is some kind of unusual garland wrapping itself around our tree. There we go. So let's take a look at these finished ones. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and it gives you some fun ideas to do with paper piecing and distress oxides. Um, oops, let me not put that one out because it's an unfinished one. So is that one. Just all kinds of fun things that you can do with different products to get a lot of different looks on basically the same thing. So let me go ahead and move these closer together. Always think about what you have for your embellishments in your stash because that is a perfect way to um, dress things up. And sometimes you'll think of things that you never had any idea that you might think of. So that's it for this morning. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you soon.